Hi everyone, it's Monica and today I'm going to be wrapping up what I read for October. This past month I read some really good reads and then there were some mediocre ones but overall I think it was a really good reading month and let's just get right to the first book which was It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. So this was actually a reread for me and this was the second time I was reading it and I did read It Ends With Us five stars again. Really quick, this one is about Lily Bloom who has a chance encounter with a neurosurgeon, Ryle Kincaid, on a rooftop in Boston. And from there, we learn about Lily navigating her current life as well as her past struggles. I did upload a reading vlog with my full thoughts on this book and it was quite interesting reading it for the second time and if you are interested in that reading vlog, I will link that up above in the eye as well as in the description box below. But some very brief thoughts on what I did think about about It Ends With Us. It still hit me in the gut with all the struggles that Lily experiences and how she's navigating this complex situation that she finds herself in. I do think it's important to point out that it's not as simple as people think to just remove yourself from a type of situation that Lily is in, is um, a, an abusive relationship. This book does really show a raw and honest and sad truth that many women do face. I did end up crying again in this reread which again is something that I don't really do when reading books. I need to be really emotionally connected to the characters or with their situation or whatever's going on in that book. But for this one, this book does highlight the impact of spoiler warning domestic violence and the complexities of that sort of situation. But I'm really proud of Lee for remaining resilient and strong throughout her journey and finding herself again. And I did end up reading the sequel to this one, It Starts With Us, so stick around for my thoughts on that one. My next read was a YA dark academia fantasy book and it is a Lessons in Vengeance by Victoria Lee and I rated this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars. In this one, we're following Felicity Morrow who is attending Dollarway boarding school after the death of her girlfriend. Felicity has returned to the school to graduate and the school has a history of mysterious murders as well as witchcraft rumors. There is also the new arrival of a new first year student who is a cognitive novelist at 17 years old and her name is Alice. And Felicity and Alice, they quickly become friends and collaborate on a project of discovering and researching more about the murders that happened at this school. Okay, so first off, I really wanted to like this book a lot more than I did. It really has all the elements that I love. It's like a potential murder mystery, there's dark academia elements, there are questionable narrators, as well as a boarding school setting. So I love all those elements, but I think there just wasn't something that clicked for me while I'm reading this one. And the parts that didn't really resonate with me and I was kind of annoyed at was the emphasis on rich spoiled kids. There was also a lot of philosophy talk and method writing so it's like a form of method acting but I guess now in this book the writer is now performing whatever their characters are doing. So that was a little bit strange to me. Also, being a non-English literature student and in this book there's a bunch of the classic references that I didn't really understand and it completely flew over my head. So I think with that, it just made this book feel a lot more pretentious than it needed to be. And the beginning of this book was quite slow for me, but there are some winning parts of this book, including the sapphic relationship and speaking quite openly about therapy and mental health and bringing up the unreliable narrator aspect. Felicity, who had kind of an experience with her past girlfriend and her past girlfriend actually being dead, she doesn't really remember what happened. So with that, that, I, that was an aspect that I really did enjoy. And we have kind of like an occult side to this book with mentions of witches, magic, and haunting spirits. So that really fit into the creepy atmosphere of a boarding school set in the mountains. And the other issue that I had with this book was with the secondary main character, Ellis. Because right when Ellis appeared on the page, Felicity was just 100% obsessed over her. And I did want to have more substance or more build up in the relationship before they jumped right into that project that they did together. Felicity and Ellis do come off as shallow and entitled but 
I think you would get that at a boarding school, but somehow they're quite unique and they managed to draw people in. I was hoping for a fun dark academia book to continue my venture into the dark academia genre, but this one did fall a little bit flat for me. So the next book I did read was a novella and this was Evershore by Brandon Sanderson. I think this is like the third novella in the Skyward series and I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. These novellas are quite important to the series themselves so and more world building which I'm getting tired of in this series. Brandon Sanderson, he loves building up his world and I really do enjoy that in his fantasy books. But in the sci-fi genre, I like to keep it a little bit more enclosed, even though in the sci-fi genre you do have multiple planets. But overall, with all of these novellas, I do think that Evershore could have been a lot shorter. But other than that, I really did enjoy the character growth that we got from Georgian and FM. And I hope the finale of the Skyward series will wrap everything up nicely. And moving on to my next book, and I did pick up the sequel to It Ends With Us, and it is It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. And I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And for It Ends With Us, I did end up uploading another reading vlog that's focused on this book and what I thought about it. And if you want my full, full thoughts, I will link that up above in the eye and in the description box below. This sequel did end up making me cry again and that is what made my rating quite generous. Again, my reasoning was that I really cry in books. It had like that emotional side to come out of me. I did increase my rating for this book. Overall, I think this book was a nice follow-up to It Ends With Us, but it was really, really unnecessary. It wasn't a necessary sequel at all. And Colleen Hoover does make like an author note at the beginning of this book as well as in the acknowledgements that the only reason that she wrote this book was because of the resurgence of It Ends With Us getting quite popular on TikTok. Personally, I was quite satisfied with the ending with the first book. In this one, I was like, was it really necessary to even write? But it did have a nice wrap up to the relationship of Lily and her new love interest. There were some convenient turn of events in this book, but we did get that healing journey that I really, really enjoyed that Lily embarks on. I really did love the emphasis on the hope, healing, and patience of people that may have left abusive relationships. So I really did like how Colleen did dive in deeper into that. But again, this book wasn't necessary, although I still liked how all the characters that we meet, with the characters that we like, got their happy endings. And I'll say if you were happy with the ending of It Ends With Us, you could just skip off with this one and you wouldn't miss out on anything. And my last read for October was another adult rom-com and it was Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Typically, I am one to describe romance books with tropes, so this one was a opposites attract trope as well as an age gap trope. We're following Alexis who is an ER doctor and one night when she's just driving back to her home city, she gets her car stuck in a ditch. But a friendly passerby, Daniel, helps her out and there is an undeniable chemistry between them. However, the differences of being 10 years apart with completely different lifestyles and different careers, it makes their relationship one that is really hard to commit to. This one also has dual perspectives, which I love when we get that in a romance book. We do learn how Alexis is struggling to carry on that torch to further her family's medical legacy and Alexis also has an ex-boyfriend that really wants her back, a dismissive father, and shallow friends. And at 38 years old, Alexis finally kind of wants more out of her life than what her parents want her to pursue. For Daniel, he is the mayor of a small town, Walken, I think that's how you pronounce it. He's also the owner of a B&B, 
bed and breakfast. And he's also quite a talented carpenter on the side. Daniel is actually quite a genuine guy and everyone really looks to him to be this calm and staying force in town. And I really love one of the quotes that Daniel does say is grace costs you nothing and that does carry a lot of good theme throughout the book. And when Alexis and Daniel collide, there's instant sparks and attraction between them. Because of that, Alexis keeps on coming back for some more spice in her life. <laughs> and the large issue in the relationship is that Alexis is not willing to commit to Daniel because of how different their lifestyles are and how different they are as people that she believes that they are supposed to be. But Alexis does believe that Daniel is one of the best unexpected things that has walked into her life. And on Daniel's side of things, he just is amazed that a woman like Alexis could even have an interest in him as being a guy from a small town and Alexis being like an ER doctor. So they both have similar feelings on this topic, but Daniel, of course, is more open to continuing their relationship and committing to each other. There's also a really nice mention of a lack of proper health care and a need for physicians in rural areas. So I really did like that as a theme in this book. I really enjoyed the journey of these two navigating the relationship. The only thing that I did not like was how there was like a lot of last minute realizations for Alexis at the end of the book and there's that whole rom-com moment. But other than that, I did really love the setting of the small town. The message of being kind really does not cost you anything and there's a lot of fun rom-com moments in this book that actually made me laugh. Overall, this was a really enjoyable read to end off the month of October and I will definitely be reading more from this author. And those were all the books that I read in October and I hope to read more in November as always. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and comment down below what you read this month and I hope you all had a wonderful day. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!